Sunday school. Uh, we're going to start off today's uh, festivities okay. with uh, Thomas Van Winkle and the uh, BBS. All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Great to see you all this morning. Yes. One announcement I would like to highlight from the announcements up here as well as in your bulletin is this year's Vacation Bible School program. Oh, hi, Thomas. I was just about to tell the congregation about our upcoming VBS. It looks like you've already been preparing. Hmm, you look like you could use some coffee. Thankfully, there is a luncheon after today's worship service where you can have some coffee along with some burgers and hot dogs. Yeah, I heard there's a survival element to this VBS, and I could only bring five things I'd bring if I was left alone on a deserted island. I was up all night thinking about it. Well, I'm not sure who told you that you could only bring those five things, but I'm really curious what you chose. Well, since I can't give me my many lost hours of sleep, I'll take you up on that cup of coffee, but that's something I should have added to my survival choices. I'd say coffee's definitely a VBS survival tool. It's a done deal. I'll get you the latte of your dreams after you tell me what you've brought to the island. Or you well, I don't to... want to burn to a crisp in the sun, so I brought some sunscreen, and no one could survive without water, so I brought a big bottle. I added my Bible because it's the best book ever, and then a bottle of bug spray because I'm not a fan of the biting, buzzy, creepy crawlies. <laughs> Those all seem like good choices to me. You have one more there. What's that? My favorite movie. I could see why that would help pass the time. But how would you watch it? Welcome to my sleepless night, Tommy. I couldn't decide whether to bring it or a portable DVD player to play it on. It's a chicken or the egg kind of thing, and it's the reason my hair is a shipwreck today. <laughs> Sounds like you could have used a rescue last night. Actually, res rescue is what kids are going to be learning about at Shipwreck VBS. How even when we're lonely, when we worry or struggle, when we do wrong, or when we're powerless, Jesus rescues. I can handle a sleepless night or two knowing kids are going to be learning all that at VBS. Me too. Let's meet up during the luncheon and get some coffee, and I'll tell you more, all, more about it. I hope you will all come aboard for a wonderful VBS. Registration is open to all students entering pre-K through sixth grade in September of 2018. Registration forms can be found on our church website, firstreformsaddlebrook.com, or on the back table of the sanctuary. I will also have an area set up downstairs in the Van White Fellowship Hall where you can register your child during the luncheon. At this time, I'd like to play a short video showing you what this year's VBS is all about. August 6th to the 10th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Let's quiet our hearts as we come into this time of worship. Oh, imagine being shipwrecked and landing. Finding myself out of loss for words, 
And the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you'd say. Word of God, speak. Would you pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see? your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place please let me stay and rest in your holiness word of god speak Finding myself in the midst of you, beyond the music, beyond the noise, and all that I need is to be with you and in the quiet. Hear your voice, word of God, speak. You pour down like rain, washing my eyes to see your majesty to be still and know that you're in this place. Please let me stay and rest in your holiness. Word of God, speak. Finding myself at a loss for words And the funny thing is, it's okay Please join me in the call to worship Give honor to the Lord, you angels Give honor to the Lord for his glory and strength The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The glory of the God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty sea. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. Please join me in the hymn of praise 209. This is the day. Let's stand as we sing this. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, Rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day, this is a day that the Lord has made. Thank you. You may be seated.
prayer of confession. Dear Lord, we humbly ask for your forgiveness. We have sinned against you and others. We have sinned by nature. Our sins grieve our hearts and we are heartily sorry. Please grant us your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a few moments of silent prayer and reflection. Please join me in assurance of forgiveness. Lord, we thank you and praise you for Son Jesus. It is only through him that we stand righteous and forgiven before you. It is by grace we have been saved, not by us. We believe in Jesus. Amen. Amen. I to invite the children forward for a message. Here, why don't you move back a little bit? That's good. Come on up. Hi. <laughs> All right. Good to see everybody. Well, listen, I found something very special. I want to share it with you. I'm going to leave it in the bag because that way you can touch it. What is this? Yeah, take a look at that. You can pass it around. Well, it might have been made by a small bird, I guess. Look at that, a bird's nest. Maybe just room for one egg. What, what is it? Why does a bird build a nest? What's going on there? Go ahead. For shelter. For shelter. What else? Guess. For laying the eggs. Right. What else? For comfort. Yeah, it's a, yeah. That's right. They put it in a safe place so that the predators can't reach it. You got anything else? What else? Um, what is a nest made out of? So the, so the eggs stay warm. That's right, the eggs stay warm. What else? It's made out of grass, sometimes um, twigs. Yeah, now how do they do this? You see, they made a circle. How do they do that? They use mud. They use mud, or yes. What else? This looks like a nice nest, right? Yeah. Well, I want you to think about the idea, well, let's, let's talk about those things that you listed. Safe, warm, a place to grow, right? Because the eggs don't stay eggs. At some point, somebody kind of wiggles out of those eggs, right? And then they fly away. You know what? When I saw this nest on the ground yesterday, I thought to myself, what else is like a nest? What else do we know that's like a nest where it's safe and warm and you grow up and you fly away and sometimes you come back? What? Your house. Your house? What else is like that? There's something else that's like that. What else? Like, it's like the chrysalis made out of twigs. That's right. It's like a chrysalis. Future scientist there. The what else? Is there anything here in this room that might remind you of a nest? Yes. Good. God can be like a nest, but I was thinking church is like a nest. It's safe, it's warm, people grow, and sometimes they fly away, and sometimes they come back, all the way from San Francisco. But um, this is where you get to grow and, and become more like Jesus. Um, some people live in churches, I guess, yes. But here it is, okay? So anytime you see a nest, I want you to think church is just like a nest. It's a safe place for you to grow, okay? And it's also been built by many people before you, just like the mother bird builds the nest, okay? We're so thankful for you coming to Sunday school. We want you to keep coming. We want you to invite some friends. It's a safe and good place. Okay, let's uh, take any prayer requests. Anything we can pray for? Let's breathe. Let's breathe. Okay, that's important too. All right, let's say a prayer together. Dear Lord, thank you so much for these children. We ask you to watch over them during the summer. Keep them safe and having fun. We ask you to be with them. We thank you for their teachers and uh, their helpers this year. And uh, we pray for continued growth 
as they uh, grow in this, this nest here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now, don't go anywhere because I heard you're going to help Jim with something next. All right, where's my kids? All right. Well, we have our little percussion band today. <laughs> you know, it, what does it say in the Word of God? Make a joyful... Uh, was that noisy? Make a joyful... Noise. Right. right! So today we're going to make a joyful noise. We're going to sing three songs together. So if you want to open your hymn books up to uh, 213. All right? And the words will be in your hymn book. They'll also be on your screen. So if you want to look at the screen, you can look at the screen. If you want to look at the words in the hymn book, you can look. You have... A choice of both. Life is full of options today. <laughs> well, you can stand up if you want to stand up. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's bring the sacrifice of praise into this place. Mm -hmm. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of God. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of thanksgiving. And we offer up to you the sacrifices of joy. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say to sit the day that the Lord has made. I will joy for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will joy for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will joy for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with parade. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. And you have made me glad, you have made me glad. I will rejoice for you have me glad. You have made me glad, you have made me glad. I will rejoice for you have made me glad. And 
Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all. remain standing and greet one another with the peace of Christ. So much. So it's great to see a full church because today is definitely a special day. Today is a day that the kids are here. They have completed a year of school ministry, learned a lot about God, bonded with their friends, and uh, we want to thank so much the parents for supporting the kids, getting the kids up in the morning because it's tough. You know, everybody wants to sleep, and getting here on a Sunday, it's a challenge. But we ask that you continue to support them so that they can continue bonding with their friends and learning with God because this is going to be the key for their success as they ha head on to bigger things in life, adulthood. These are the things that are going to keep them connected to God. So thank you so much. So I'm going to um, call the teachers up front. And uh, I want to thank so much for everything that they do because they really put a lot of effort into it. Being a teacher they is actually not had easy. They perfect attendance this year, so that's good. <laughs> So uh, the first one is Mary, Mary Marino. She's downstairs. Okay. Yeah. 
And so, Brianna's down there, too. And Brianna. <laughs> but we want to give a certificate to Caitlin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. And you can sit. Deborah Peluso had perfect attendance yeah. until today. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to put hers on the side. <laughs> the next one is um, Haley. She's uh, been helping the, the class, been doing a great job. So thank you so much, Haley, for everything that you do. And uh, the, the students, uh, the, the teachers, um, have under their classes uh, Francesco Peluso. Okay, thank you. Uh, Joseph, uh, I'm sorry if I pronounced it incorrectly. Lalicata. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and Angelina Young. Thank you. The next teacher is Ellen Plogg. Thank you, Ellen. <laughs> Let me pass this down. Thank you. And um, we have a certificate for David. Thank you, David. Olivia. Brianna, <laughs> and George. <laughs> Thank you, George. Okay. Confirmation class. And to our dear Evelyn, who has the um, seventh and eighth grade um, confirmation. students confirmation class. <laughs> Thank you, Evelyn. So we have Justin. Thank you, Justin. We have Ben. Thank you. We have Giancarlo. We have Nolan. And Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. Do we forget anybody? Just check. Just check. No. No. Thank you, Brianna. No. I have. <laughs> you're, you're right. Um, it was a great. It was a lot of fun this year. We did have a lot. Uh, I know the second half of the year gets a little crazy with sports and and. Uh, stuff like that. So what I'm going to start doing is putting the Sunday morning classes to the coaches because the coaches seem to get everybody there every week. So uh, I'm going to start giving the Sunday, the Sunday school classes to the coaches and they can teach. But uh, uh, before we kill two birds with one stone. So what we'll do is uh, I have a great honor of giving out the scholarships this year. We have two. Um, uh, Haley Larson uh, who couldn't be here this, this weekend. Um, after all, it is prom weekend. So uh, then we have uh, a young man, uh, I've known, oh my gosh, since he was this big, and now he's this big. <laughs> um, Josh Marin, uh, who's been uh, part of this church forever. Uh, been dealing with him since I've been with Christian Ministries uh, in this church, beginning to work with him. I've gotten to work with him um, in VBS for many years, and uh, he's been a big help in the food pantry and a lot of help to the community and the, and the service. Um, as the Marin family does here. And uh, uh, it's been a great, you know, great, great time getting to know Josh throughout the years, watching him uh, go into this massive tank. <laughs> That's what I call him. That's what I call him. He, he, uh, he's just one awesome guy. Uh, I heard, I'm really upset that I missed it because I heard he just got into acting. So I would have really liked to have seen that um, at his school. But he's uh, just graduating this year. Uh, and uh, moving on to uh, Susquehanna University in the fall, where he's going to be studying sociology. So I'd like to congratulate and bring up Josh Marin, Joshua Marin, for this year's scholarship. Well, 
Look at him. <laughs> hey, you want to give a speech? No. <laughs> Thank you. Here's everything. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Everyone. I want to turn to God's word this morning. Let's uh, ask for the Holy Spirit's help. Lord, uh, we see the fruit of the Spirit in this room this morning. Peace and joy and love and kindness and compassion. All of those uh, we give thanks. We ask that, they, that you continue to share your Spirit, pour out your Spirit today as we listen for your Word, as it teaches and guides and is the foundation of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. He called a child whom he put among them and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones, believe in me, it will be better for you to, if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good job, yes, good job. This passage of Jesus teaching this story starts with a question. I'm just going to turn this down for a second. His disciples come to him and they say, Who is the greatest in this kingdom? You know, Jesus, you've been telling us about this kingdom. And remember, when Jesus is talking about the kingdom, he's talking about God's reign, God's influence in this world. And so they start to hear about this, and they're like, yeah, this sounds awesome. How can I be the greatest in this kingdom? Classic human ego question. How can I be on a billboard? How can I be on television? How can I be the greatest in what you're talking about, Jesus? And the answer, as you might expect, Jesus flips it around. He says, okay, you want to see who the greatest is? And he's among a crowd. He pulls a kid over and he says, you want to be the greatest? You're going to have to be like this child. And there had to have been, it's not recorded, there had to have been some laughter because once again, they might have said, what kind of kingdom is this? What kind of kingdom is this that if you're the greatest in this kingdom, you're like a child? But that's, that's the beauty of this message. Jesus is saying, you need to be like children. In fact, more than that, he says, you need to change and be like this child to be the greatest in this kingdom, to be, enter into this kingdom. And you think to yourself, wait a minute, how can I be like a child again? You remember in John chapter 3, Nicodemus, the religious leader, comes to Jesus and he says, you know, I'm hearing your teachings, this is sounding great, but when you say born again, I can't go back in time, I can't re-enter my mother's womb. And so when Jesus says here in Matthew, you have to change and turn and be like a child, what could he mean? You know, when J.M. Barry wrote Peter Pan, there was no evidence of him you know, having any Christian influence. But writing the character of Peter Pan was more than just fighting pirates and, and leading the, uh, the lost boys. It was this idea, if you know anything about the story, it was this idea of trying to create a character or a child that never grows up, that is always young. And part of it was his life experience. He had some loss in life, and he looked at life and he said, as you get older, as you become an adult, you lose good things along the way. When Jesus says, if you want to be like, if you want to enter to the kingdom, you want to be like the kingdom, and you want to turn, you might ask, turn from what? Well, all of us adults sitting here know what are, what are some of the characteristics of being an adult? Tired, <laughs> skeptical, mm, suspicious, 
fearful. And sometimes there's, there's warrant for some of those. But unfortunately, that's the hallmark of a lot of adult life. Jesus understood that as well. That's why he looked at the adults and he said, if you want to be in the kingdom, you have to be like this. You have to change back to this. Joyful, fun, open to discovery, fearless, trusting. All of those things that we've seen, whether playing the drums or or just coming up and getting a certificate. It's all here. And so a message to the children is, stay like this. Stay hungry for learning. Stay trusting of safe adults around you. Continue to to have joy and have fun safely. But then for us as adults, we have to turn. He doesn't say children change. He says to the adults, you need to turn, you need to change and be more open and loving and trusting and have an openness to learning about God and to be, to try to be fearless and joy and to push back on fatigue and all of those things and and just the skepticism that that we've kind of, it just is there so much we don't even realize it's skepticism anymore. That's the kingdom. That's God's work in this world. And in some ways, you know, we shouldn't be surprised that Christianity is declining or Christianity is having less of an impact. As we see skepticism and cynicism grow and increase, well, they're the enemies. They're the opposite of of faith, of the kingdom. And so for us today on Children's Day to think about making this church a safe place for kids, but also in our own hearts, thinking about how we need to hear, heed Jesus' words and say, I need to turn, I need to come back. You heard me on Easter tell that story of when I was an eight-year-old and I really believed that Jesus could be in the living room. He wasn't, per se. But that belief, the belief in things being possible. How many times have you said to yourself, how many times have you heard the verse, with God all things are possible. possible. We hear that as adults, we say, yeah, I hear that in the Bible, but... No, take away the but. All things are possible with God. And just the, just the trying to believe that all things are possible again, that'll make a huge difference. With God, all things are possible. That possibility that, yes, people can be reconciled, that there can be forgiveness, that there can be strengthening, that there can be an endurance through the worst of circumstances and losses. Many of you know all of that is possible. To get a diagnosis and overcome it, you know this, we know this, but it's a matter of tuning our hearts and walking in that faith and possibility. If not just for ourselves, for the example, for these young ones, these precious ones. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for the gift of these children. Thank you for the gift of this church. And yes, we hear Jesus' words loud and clear this morning that we need to turn from our doubt, our fear, our questions, our cynicism, all the things that kind of builds up all that toxicity and poison in our souls. We want a cleansing. We want a heart that's filled with possibility, a heart that trusts you, that believes that in all things you work for good. Help us to be people of joy and people of hope. We turn back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Let's take some time to give thanks to God. Children will help us with that. We thank you, Lord, for meeting our needs. We meet our needs in abundance so that we can may share these good things with other need, others in need. Open our eyes, our hearts, and our hands to share with those in need in the community and world. Please bless these gifts and offerings for that purpose today. Amen. Please be seated. Want to share some joys and concerns? sharing prayer as a church family. Let's pray together. And then is there someone help with the Lord's Prayer? Okay. Why don't you come and set up? I'll say the prayers of the people and then I'll then you can do the our Father, okay? Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. 
great joy and celebration here. We're thankful. Lord, we want to lift up Aunt Susan with her cancer diagnosis. We pray for her treatment and her strength and endurance. Uh, we're thankful Susie's here today. Continue to give her strength and patience. Lord, we're so glad to see Sue Cruz here. Um, you've, you've, uphold, you've upheld her for nearly a year, and we're thankful to see her back. We pray for patience for her. We pray for strength in her legs. Continue to help her uh, strengthen her walking. Lord, we celebrate with Kathleen and Patrick that uh, he's got a new job. Pray for safe travels there. We pray about Tyler serving in uh, the Air Force. We pray for safety, and we give thanks for his sacrifice, um, his service. Lord, we give thanks for Ellen being here. We pray about Kevin and his family. We pray for comfort for them during this time of transition. And we give thanks for this church, beautiful things happening here, uh, visible and invisible. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Amen. Let's close our service with hymn number 672. Oh, we have one more thing. I apologize. Oh, yeah, we come. We, the members of the confirmation class of 2018, have been taught throughout our Sunday school experience that as God's people, we are here to serve him, honor him, and to serve one another. During the course of this past year, our class discussed various ways in which we as a group could serve God and you, the members of our faith community. We unanimously agreed on one idea as a constructive way to accomplish this purpose. We decided we would like to see first, the First Reformed Church Bell located on Ackerman Avenue be restored to its former glory. As a group of five boys, however, we cannot take on this project alone. We have the support of the Building and Grounds Committee and the Consistory, but we also need your help and support as well. We are appealing to each of you to make this not a confirmation class effort, but a church effort in which every person finds a way and a place to help and con contribute to an important and worthwhile project. The church bell was and is an important part of history of First Reformed Church and the surrounding community. The bell was forged in 1901, a year after the church itself was formed by the E.A. Williams and Son Bell Foundry located in New Jersey, Jersey City, New Jersey. The bell was cast specifically for the First Reformed Church of Saddlebrook. It hung in the bell tower of the original church building where it rang out every Sunday morning calling God's people to come and worship. It was later moved into the bell tower of the new church building, and there it not only rang out to call to worship every Sunday, but with the addition of a bell tower speaker, music was played prior to church service, which would be heard throughout the neighborhood. The church bell was also rung for special occasions during its time in the bell tower, and the sound of bell and music were a welcome and expected part of every Sunday morning in the Saddlebrook community. Unfortunately, a fire destroyed the section of the church containing the bell power, and afterwards the bell was placed in storage and was unseen and unheard for many years. About 30 to 35 years ago, a group of members decided to build a shelter along Ackerman Avenue and resurrect the church bell and put it on display for the church and community. Once on display, it was rung for special occasions and is still operational today and can still be rung. Due to exposure to weather and the elements, the bell is in need of polishing and the yoke and operating equipment is in bad shape, as is the surrounding shelter. As a, a group with the adult help and supervision, we would like to attempt to polish the bell, but it is possible that it will need professional cleaning and polishing. The wheel, operational equipment, and yoke will need professional help to clean and restore or perhaps need replacement. The shelter will also need a complete restoration or may need to be rebuilt, perhaps using more maintenance-free materials. This project will be a big undertaking, but one we pray you will want to be a part of and will want to see through to completion. 
We are excited to see this project begin and then reach a wonderful conclusion. We pray that each of you, each of you will plan to be a part of this project in some way because it's your church, your bill, and your history as well as ours. Yes, it's a big undertaking, but if we all work together and our efforts, our efforts are the glory of God, is anything too big to stop us? Is there anything more important than God's people striving to achieve an important goal that unites us in our hearts, hands, service, and purpose? Again, we ask you please join us and help us restore the symbol of our church history so that it will always remain a reminder to us and the community that is indeed time to come and worship your God. Thank you. We hope that, like us, you will want to see the bell and shelter restored so that it could once again reflect the history of the church and the bell's part in helping First Reformed announce God's grace, love, and glory to this community and the world. Again, we cannot do this alone and ask for your health both physically and financially. We will work this, we will work with and rely on the advice and recommendations of the Building and Grounds Committee to come up with a reasonable, reasonable plan of action and a sense of cost which we know will make to the congregation. We will also keep you informed of any physical help needed both for the belt and the shelter. We plan to try some cleaning methods on the belt to determine if it is possible for us to manually clean or if we will need some professional cleaning. Again, our physical abilities are limited, but our desire is not. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you didn't catch the beginning, this is the confirmation class and they are going to assist and lead and inspire us into restoring the bell and the bell tower outside. So a very uh, worthy project, ambitious project, and that's why they're enlisting our help. Thank you. Well, let's conclude our service with a very fitting song. What a mighty God we serve. We invite you to a time of fellowship. You can smell the burgers cooking. They're downstairs for you. And uh, again, we thank you for the trust with your children. Uh, we send you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
Help us to be nourished by it and by the fellowship as well. In Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. We've all gone out.